Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at this knife, the CH3002 G10 version with D2 steel. You can also find this exact same design by CH in a titanium handle with S35VN steel. I'll show you some pictures right now. And uh, this knife is available on Amazon.com for Americans, and that's the best price I can find anywhere. But for very much the same price, you can find it on AliExpress. And uh, that's where I believe I got mine sent to me by my friend at the Y-Start store there. He's got CH knives, Tucson knives, of course, Y-Start knives, uh, several other brands. I'll list them on the screen. And so if you can patronize his store since he gave me this knife, I would appreciate that very much. Uh, he only has this specific version in this orange and in that bright blue right now. So let's get this thing over to the tabletop and take a good close look at it. First, let's talk about the styling, hand feel, stuff like that. Uh, we've got a drop point blade with a high saber grind, almost a full flat, but not quite. A really uh, pointy tip on here, and I'll show you a close-up picture of that. Decent belly, long flat section here that's really good for all kinds of cutting tasks. And uh, a swedge on the top of the blade there. A thick blade, I'll talk about the details of that later on. Very good sharpness trial, done excellent. We've got just a very, well on this side you can see there's no real uh, finger trial here for the index finger. There's a little bit of a cutout here but that's for your thumb for when you want to go to unlock the knife. Uh, so it's basically a stick, very little bit of a swell at the back, hardly anything at all. If you put a flat piece of the, here let me go, here's my note board. You put it flat against there, and it's just a very slight rocking right there. Not much at all. And then you've got an angle on the back here. Uh, a little bit of a rest area here for your pinky. If you do want to do an extended hold and you grab it back here, you can put your pinky right in that spot and then hold it further back to get longer reach and still get a secure hold on it. And um, we've got a small backspacer lanyard hole that goes right through that backspacer so it's a nice tube. Placement for that lanyard hole is actually pretty good. Um, I'd like it to be down here actually below that screw instead but that spot isn't terrible, not bad. Uh, pocket clip is uh, a very functional pocket clip, not super deep carry and I'll show you that in a little while. You, about 5 eighths of the knife, 1.6 uh, centimeters sticks out of your pocket. The way the pocket clip is made it uh, guides your pants pocket through there and holds it quite well. Good retention, good hold. And here's how it looks when it goes in the pocket. You can see that lip there goes over the edge of the pocket very easily, cinches down, holds on very nicely. We've got skeletonizing in here and you can see it right there. And there's just a little bit of skeletonizing on the working side that has the liner lock, and the other side's got a lot of skeletonizing. Before I forget, and I've been forgetting on a lot of videos, the balance point is right there. And uh, it's, a, it's a perfect balance point for this knife. Uh, for the size of this knife, it's... Uh, quite light actually it's not bad at all uh, we've got a flipper tab that's got just a little bit of jimping there and the flipper tab sits on an angle so it's basically designed for the light switch method and for that it works very very well but you can just push just slightly backward and there you go it opens up quite well there too the detent on it is good uh, it's really hard to get your finger in here because they put that swedge on to, to pinch it to get it to come out but uh, trust me it holds quite well. It's not going to open up accidentally easily, um, but it's not hard to overcome the detent when you go to open the knife. It's a very well balanced knife, very well balanced uh, pivot. Uh, we've got steel ball bearings in there and uh, they roll well. 
I did take the knife apart and uh, lubricate it, but it was opening very well before then as well. I just can't demonstrate that. Uh, this is one time where I took the knife apart beforehand because I was very unsure if it was a free spinning pivot or not, and I wanted to be able to say that on the video. Unfortunately, this is a free spinning pivot, and even worse, it's got an awful lot or an awful strong thread locker in there. It took a lot of work to undo it. Uh, let me go get my tools and I'll show you what I had to do. Uh, well, actually, my knees are very painful today, and so I don't want to go upstairs to get the tools. So let me tell you this. I had to use my vise that I've shown on several other videos to hold the knife in place, stop it from falling over, because it's really dangerous sometimes when you got one screwdriver on each side, and it really would have been for this. So held in a vise, I got two T8 screws, screwdrivers, and I know this isn't one. I'm just showing, and I couldn't undo it that way. What I had to do is I had to take a vise grip lock it on the screwdriver on either side so that I could have some torque. And even then, I had to be very, very careful. I had to use my drive grip so that uh, it wouldn't slip in there at all. Uh, these are pretty well-made uh, screw holes, like the Torx heads here on these screws. These are custom made for, this, for these knives by CH. And so it's fairly deep, but I did have a little bit of a slip and so I did use drive grip material and that really helped me. And uh, then I finally got it taken apart and uh, wow, it was a bit to take it apart. So not free spinning pivot and I mean free spinning pivot and that's not a very good thing because it did take a lot of work to take that apart. Now it did not need adjusting. It was very straight uh, from the factory. It's a slight bit off to this one side and that's ex this is exactly how it was from the factory. It's pretty close to centered. You know, I just have to push it a tiny bit to make it perfectly centered. It's just that tiny bit over. And the action was awesome from the factory. But eventually, chances are very high that if you have a knife, you're going to need to take it apart sometime to do some maintenance. And so that's one of the big cons on this knife. Um, the screws here are kind of weird. They're T8 back here, but they're also T6. And they're T6 with the screws that are with the pocket clip. And this stud joins with that pocket clip. Now, I like it when they do dual duty that way. And so I like that part. But that's kind of weird that you've got T8 and T6. And it looks kind of odd in there, too. So, But be that as it may, uh, T6, T8, and T8 up here. The uh, lock up here is exactly how I like a brand new knife to be. It's fully engaged uh, the lock arm and the tang of the blade, but there's lots of room for wear over across during the life of the knife, so that's a very good thing. It's very comfortable in hand, and the flipper tab does provide enough of a guard to feel secure when you're using it. Now, I do very little puncturing kind of actions, so I'm not concerned at all about not having a finger choil here for safety, but I do like a good finger choil here for comfort, so I don't know. It's, it's not that big a deal. I do find it quite comfortable. Um, highly skeletonized makes it light. Uh, I'll actually, I'll do the summary a little bit later. Why don't we do all of the measurements right now? The weight to this knife is 124 grams, 4.4 ounces. And I'll tell you a little later on, it's about eight and three quarter inches. So that's not bad. Uh, the sharpness from the factory, very good, 165. That's actually very good. The cutting edge, is 9.45 centimeters, 3.7 inches. The full length, so the tip of the blade to the closest spot on the handle, 9.78 centimeters, 3.85 inches. The thickness of the blade is four millimeters, that's 0.1575 inches. So I said it was a little thick, yet nicely thick here. The uh, blade depth, that's this dimension here, 2.44 centimeters, 0.96 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind right there, very good, 0.54 millimeters, which is 0 0.0215 inches. The grind angle, very good as well, 20.8 on, whoops, on this side where it says CH, 20.8 and 21.5 on this side. So basically it's 0.7 difference from one side to the other, not bad at all. And it's right around that 20 degree mark, which is beautiful. The handle length 
is 12.4 centimeters, 4.88 inches. The grip area in here, it's about four and a quarter inches, 10.8 centimeters. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 1.5 centimeters, 0.59 of an inch. So it is a slight bit thicker than half an inch, but not bad. The handle depth this way, 2.39 centimeters, 0.94 of an inch. And the handle depth when the knife is closed is 2.72 centimeters, 1.07 inches. And like I was saying about the full length of this knife, it is 22.2 centimeters, 8.74 inches. And so that makes it a beautiful thing that you can buy for $29.99 US. Uh, you, like I said at the beginning, you can get it at Amazon.com and I've got a link for that. It's a referral link, so I do get a tiny bit of a commission. Or, and I really would like anybody else, especially if you're not in the United States, if you want to buy this, uh, you can buy that at AliExpress and I'll give you the link there. So the unique features of this knife, well, the blade is a little bit thicker than average. I do like the jimping up here, but that's not a unique feature. I'm, the unique feature is the, the blade thickness, and that's about it. Uh, the jimping here on the spine, the thumb rest area, is um, not quite as coarse as I would like it to be. I'd like it to be a little more grippy, but it's not bad. Uh, the swedge up here helps give it a look that it's thinner and gets thicker right here. So it is a fairly thick blade. It stays full thickness until the last inch. And so it's a fairly stout tip as well. Fairly strong is what I mean. But it's a very pointy tip here as well. So it's great for piercing into things if you need to. Or if you need to do some delicate work. Uh, the grip is very good. You can get any grip you want on this knife. You know, a, re a reverse grip. You know, your basic you know, fist grip. Saber grip. Uh, all the different grips you want to hold this knife with. Uh, all the different ways that you want to use it is just fine because it's such a standard, basically straight. I almost ca I call them sometimes candy bar shaped knives. You know, this looks like a Kit Kat arm in in a sense. You know, with sort of the proportions. Very good sharpness trial. Like I said before, they've done excellent of that. So it's easy to sharpen this knife without messing up your plunge there or the ricasso or anything. That's important because a lot of guys, you know, have a tougher time sharpening their knives and it's easy to mess up in there. And so I like that. I already talked about the tip. The pivot screw is made well in terms of how well they've milled out, you know, the hole for the uh, T8 screwdriver. It's, an, it's a good fit on these screws, but uh, the big con, like I was saying, is it's not a free spinning pivot. For other cons, I don't know. It gets slightly hot in hand for extended use, and it's mostly because of this side right here. And all I need to do is run some sandpaper across that a few times and, and break that edge a little bit because it's almost a 90 degree corner there, and that would solve that problem you know, in a heartbeat. So that's not a big deal. I will give links down below for the uh, titanium you know, S35VN format as well. Although most of my viewers are budget guys and you're really looking for cheaper knives. But for 30 US dollars, I think this knife is, should be on your buy list if it's something that you like the aesthetics of. Functionally, it's good. If you can overcome uh, that pivot screw, this is definitely on a buy list, on a recommend list. Um, if they would have made shoddy screw heads here that strip really easily, I would say do not buy. But no, they made really good screw heads here. So... That's what saves this uh, free spinning pivot. So thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, all the things you do. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.